Whenever we hear of haunted houses, it usually entails a long history of strange and unexplained disturbances. But this story is quite different and inspired by true events. I won't be mentioning any names or any exact location, but I will tell you that it happened in the mid 90s, somewhere in North Devon, England. We were a family of four and had lived in the house for around eight years without any paranormal events. So it was very surprising to experience this on the very same day we were moving out. The truck wasn't quite large enough to fit all of our things. So we ended up squeezing everything else into the car, which meant that there wasn't enough room for all of us to travel together. I was asked to stay behind while my parents unloaded everything from the car into the new house, which wasn't too far away. So I had no reason to suspect that I would have to wait long. I was left with a single key to the front door that I locked as soon as they left and my mother instructed me to keep all the windows upstairs closed because the neighbor's cat kept wandering on to the property and getting into the house. One of the things that surprised me though as I went into my old room was seeing a mirror hanging on the wall that I'd never seen before. As it had been previously hidden from view by the wardrobe that was there. Knowing that the mirror had been there all these years without my knowledge was kind of strange and it only provided a blurred out reflection due to all the dust. It appeared to be firmly secured to the wall, which I guess is why my parents decided to leave it there. After locking all the upstairs windows and making sure there were no uninvited felines inside the house, I waited patiently for the sound of my dad's car pulling up on the driveway. But three hours later, I was still waiting and it was already getting dark. Remember, this was back in the 90s and cell phones weren't all that common just yet. So there was no way of contacting my parents and I remember feeling extremely bored at the time. A cell phone would have been a real lifesaver back then, for more reasons than one. But I would have settled for my old hacky sack or even one of my sister's tamagotchis to kill the time. Unfortunately, most of the light bulbs in the house had been removed, except for the one above the staircase, which I turned on. Although I decided to stay in the living room because the temperature upstairs was a lot colder for some reason. About an hour later, it started to rain and I was feeling hungry. I regretted not taking anything to eat with me, although I didn't expect to be waiting this long. So I went into the kitchen to see if there was any food that had been left behind in one of the cabinets. As I searched the kitchen, I couldn't ignore this thought in the back of my mind of being left out. I hadn't even seen the new house yet and the fact that my younger sister got to see it before I did kind of bothered me a little. After realizing there wasn't any food in the kitchen, I returned to the window in the living room. As I contemplated several scenarios as to why my dad hadn't arrived yet, I heard something moving around the house. At first, I suspected it was the sound of the trees blowing in the wind outside until I saw something that sent a cold shiver down my spine. The sight of someone passing in front of the window caused me to huddle into a corner where I waited motionless and completely terrified. I then heard tapping on the glass from the kitchen window, but I couldn't bear to look to see who it was and instead just imagine the same dark figure staring through the window. After the tapping stopped, it got really quiet at least for a while. The sound of shattered glass coming from upstairs caught me completely off guard. I suspected that someone assumed the house was empty and decided to break in for whatever reason. A thought that became even more horrifying as I began hearing footsteps descending the old staircase. With no curtains or furniture, even the slightest sound would reverberate through the entire house and there were very few places to hide so I immediately snuck into another corner facing away from the hallway to avoid being seen. As I anticipated the horror of coming face to face with an intruder the loud footsteps suddenly came to a stop at the base of the stairs. 
likely blocking my only exit through the front door. I could hear the wind now probably howling through a broken window upstairs, chilling every room in the house. I was in a state of panic at that point, until suddenly I could hear footsteps again, but this time heading up the stairs. Now I was faced with a dilemma, because the intruder was probably going to wait until the rain stopped before leaving the house, and could decide to head back downstairs at any moment. I wasn't keen on the idea of running outside and down the street in the pouring rain, but I no longer felt safe in the house, so I cautiously headed towards the front door. As I approached the door, the risk of being seen seemed extremely likely, but I thought if I was fast enough, I would be able to escape and call for help. The desperate knock on the door sent me running back to the dining room, as I immediately assumed that the intruder had an accomplice and was waiting to be let in. After anticipating the sound of more footsteps on the stairs, I heard a voice at the door. I couldn't make out what was being said, but it sounded desperate. Then I heard knocking on the living room window, so I slowly peeked around the corner to see if I could get a glance of who it was. The poor lighting only provided a silhouette, and I still wasn't sure who was outside, although I did begin to think it was strange that no one had come down the stairs yet. I positioned myself for a clear view of the front door, which is when I witnessed the letterbox slowly begin to open. That's when I heard my dad's voice calling my name. I didn't hear a car pull up on the driveway or see any lights. I quickly opened the door and was surprised to see my dad completely soaking wet from the rain. Ironically, he asked me why I took so long to answer the door, which is when I told him about the intruder upstairs. He seemed strangely convinced that I was making it up, and despite pleading with him not to go upstairs, he went anyway, only to discover that no one was there. We both searched the whole house and found nothing. No signs of a break-in, windows and doors were all closed and locked and the carpet was dry. The sound of shattered glass came from the old mirror that smashed despite never falling from the wall and there was no plausible explanation for the loud footsteps I heard on the staircase. When I asked my dad why he delayed so much to pick me up, he went on to explain that the car got boxed in by the truck at the other house and had to wait until everything was unloaded before he could leave. And to make matters worse, the car broke down just a few blocks away. To this day, I still get a sense that my dad doesn't believe me and thinks I was just too ashamed to admit that I smashed the mirror out of frustration because I was left alone for so long. But I knew what I experienced was real. And it's something that has stayed with me even after all these years. As for the person who passed in front of the window facing the backyard, we later confirmed it was the neighbor looking for his cat. However, the events of that night came up shortly after in a conversation with my dad. And I asked him why he wasn't afraid of going up the stairs after telling him that there was an intruder in the house. What he said next just left me completely speechless and shook me up pretty good. He told me that he wasn't afraid because just as he was approaching the house, he saw me in the window upstairs. He tried to wave to get my attention, but he said I had this strange ghostly expression on my face, so he gave up and knocked on the door instead. The smashed mirror on the wall, loud footsteps on the staircase, and an apparent doppelganger in the window upstairs were enough to keep me away from that house, never to return. Oh.